Hello guys, what's up? This is Christopher from CMM with another quick and dirty episode. And this one is about the Uliphone Gemini. Once again, it's been a while, but this phone still isn't outdated. Um, recently, Uliphone published an offer on Facebook um, where they said that the Android N, Android 7 update or upgrade is almost ready for this phone. They've promised this since the launch, but it took a while for them to finish it. But it seems they are on the right track now. And in this offer, they offered to send the IMEI number of your phone to the company. And then they will unlock you for a kind of test for the release candidate. So this means if you are accepted as a tester, you get the OTA upgrade before anyone else and can test it. And well, actually, this is what happened to me today. Look at this. This is the Android 7 Nougat update for the Uliphone Gemini, which has been pushed to me by a standard OTA update. It's 915 megabytes in size and release date is um, May 23rd. Let's go ahead and install it and see how it goes. So this went surprisingly smooth and fast. It now says Android is upgrading optimizing apps. This will of course take a while. We will continue the music and wait until it's finished. Jack it up. So there we go, now it finished the system optimization part and I'm kind of surprised because it doesn't look like it did a factory reset. Uniphone told it will do a factory reset because this is necessary. Now what I'm gonna do is to actually do a factory reset just to make sure there are no issues caused by this upgrade. So there we go, factory data reset. Reset phone, erase everything. And once this is finished, I will set the phone up. And then we will have a short look at Android and on the Uniphone Gemini. Alright, so factory reset has finished and it's now booting and the setup screen should appear. Well, soon, <laughs> we will see. It already vibrated once, so it should pop up fairly fast. By the way, did you notice they have a new logo here? Yeah, seems like it requires some time. Well, I might do a little cut now to speed things up for you. Jack it up. So there we go. Here is the setup screen. And we can select our language. Since we are doing this video in English, I will set it to English, but as you can see, it, it has multi-language and everything is there. So let's pick English and go to get started. Set up your Gemini. So it even knows the phone's name. That's nice. That's not the case on, any, on every Chinese phone. Get your phone up and running. How would you like to set it up? Keep your apps and data set, set up as new. Get a fresh start. That's what we are doing here. And now it requires me to connect to the Wi-Fi network, which I am doing. And of course I will do a little cut now because I don't want you to know my Wi-Fi password. So here we go. I have now entered my password. Let's connect. And there we go. 
we are connected. Now it's checking the network connection. Just the usual stuff. Looking for software updates. Checking data. By the way, why it's still German? I set it to English. Well, seems like we have found the first bug, right? So now we connect to my Google account and doing a cut again. So there we go. Now I am logged in into my Google account without any issues. The language is still German. I will change that back to English later. Um, yeah, we can keep this like that. Continue. Please wait. Lock with fingerprint. Let's check that out right now. Let's do fingerprint and pin. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Boom. And now let's scan the fingerprint. And yeah, scanner works just fine, it looks. Really fast. All right. And there we go, that's the home screen, looking like before. Um, no visual changes here. So let's check the unlock procedure with the fingerprint. Of course, I first need to enter the pin code before I can use the fingerprint scanner to unlock, as usual. And it seems like I need to press to unlock. Yep, doesn't work to just Oh, it does work. Now it works. Okay. Boom. 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 So it's not the fastest, but it's okay. All right. So now let's change back the language. And as you can see, we are running Android and we have the new settings app. All features are there. So language. And sorry. English to the top and there we go. Now we have English system language. So let's just check out um, the Android N features if they are there. So in the screen settings there should be the possibility to change uh, the pixel density or scaling of the screen and yes this is there. Display size default. Let's change it to small to get more screen estate. And there we go. Look, now everything is a bit smaller. And I could also do this with the font size to get even more space. Here you go. Now everything is pretty small, but for me it's just fine. I like to have more space on my screen. MediaTek Mirror Vision is still there. Let's just set this to vivid. Oh no, let's set it to default, but let's enable the dynamic contrast setting, which I like. So that's it. Brightness level. This is perfect. Adaptive brightness is better if it's turned off for this video. Alright, so everything looks nice here. Let's check um, which security patch we have. May 5. Wow, that's really up to date. Nice thing. So yeah, in terms of performance, I don't notice any big difference. Actually, it seems to be snappier than before. So performance Performance-wise, it looks like they did improve some things here, which is really decent. Let's check out if Mata window works, or split screen, how it is called in Android. So let's open the Play Store and what else? Um, Google Chrome, why not? I need to set, up, set it up anyway. Accept and continue, continue, got it. There we go. So let's open up the App Switcher and there we go. Google Play Store and Google Chrome and let's hit the Play Store, drag it on top and then select the Chrome browser for split screen and as you can see this works just fine, awesome, really like that. So let's try installing some application. Let's install M22 just to see how many points we get. I will let that run once it's finished installing. So M22 benchmark. And we also need the 3D bench install. Hmm. 
run the checkout while this is installing, how well the browser runs in split screen mode. As you can see, China Mobile Mac loads up just fine and fast. Now I'm surprised how well this phone performs despite being only powered by a MT6737T SoC which really isn't the fastest chipset but this works really well. I mean it was quite snappy before but they really improved system performance with the Android Nougat update here. You guys that don't do the beta testing um, can really look forward to this update it seems. Really nice. So let's exit split screen mode now. Just drag this thing away and there we go. And let's close the Chrome browser and the settings app. And meanwhile until the benchmark has finished installing so we can actually run it. Let me just quickly check the temperature of the phone. Okay, it's a little bit warm, not hot, so we can run the to-do benchmark without um, having any drop in score. Let's just quickly check out specs. Here they found Gemini, Android 7.0, so it's not 7.1, 64-bit. All right, there. Battery temperature is at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Oh, and by the way, it says 16 megapixels for the rear camera, which obviously isn't correct. And our compass and gyroscope is recognized. Awesome, so let's run and to do now. Okay, as usual, we just need to allow the necessary permissions there. Boom, boom, come on. Hello, there we go. Back. And now we let it run. benchmark and meanwhile I just looked up what the previous score with the Marshmallow firmware was and it was 39,522 points and here we reached 39,255 points and well that's actually just a minute difference which is perfectly normal so actually there is no performance um, difference based on the benchmark results but I tell ya, it feels a little bit snappy, snappier than um, the previous Marshmallow ROM. So well, what other stuff to check out? I think we should have a little look at the camera and then end this video so I can do a little real life testing of the new firmware. So let's check out the camera app. Just here. So yeah, this one obviously hasn't been changed. It looks it looks exactly the same as before. So in the end to the benchmark, we have seen um, that it says a 16 megapixel camera is there, which of course is not true. Let's see if this is displayed in the camera app as well. Yep, 16 megapixels. So that's interpolated. You shouldn't use that if you want to get a proper quality. Um, the native resolution of this phone was, yes, 13 megapixels, it's a Panasonic sensor. So let's just check this, uh, set this thing to 13 megapixels. 
Oh no, let's set it to 16 by 9 at 9.5 megapixels. That's kind of better. What other stuff do we have? Touch screen to take photos. No, I don't like this. Grid line, I don't need this. Set SD, I don't need this. Video quality can be set to fine. Audio mode normal. EIS, why not? And we have all the other stuff, it's okay. So let's go back and take a sample picture. Let me just quickly check if my lens is clean. Yep, looks like this. So let's do a couple of pictures in normal mode. All right, shutter time is fairly quick. Let's take a picture of the MacBook screen and a close up to see how it performs in macro mode. How close can we get? Yeah, like this. Boom. So now we have three pictures to have a look at. Let's first check out this macro shot. And yep, that's decent. You can easily see the pixels of the Retina display even though they are very, very small. So camera still is good, hasn't got wars, which is nice. So let's check the picture from a greater distance. And also here you can still see a little bit of the pixels. It's not as crisp as the macro shot, but still very good. And colors actually do look very nice. So they did a decent job there. Yeah, this one is really nice as well. You see the structure of the aluminum, really nice. So camera still is good. No. Um, downgrading quality there, which is decent. Let's just quickly check out the SLR mode. So that's the dual camera mode as well. Um, let's take my cup of coffee here and try to get a proper bouquet shot here. So there we go. How does it look the best? Of course, for this kind of low budget dual cameras, you need perfect conditions and you need to, to know how to use them to get proper results. So this wasn't a, a proper result now, as you can see, it's not perfect, but it seems to be performing just as it did before. Um, I don't see any changes there. So if you know how to use the dual camera inside of there, you can get decent results, but it still isn't the awesome dual camera, um, some would like it to be like, for example, on the Xiaomi Mi 6 or the iPhone 7 Plus. But of course, it can't be as good because um, this is only a very simple dual camera setup. We have a 13 megapixel main sensor and just a VGA secondary sensor, which is a Galaxy Core GC030A. So, yeah, not much to expect from there. So, But it's a nice toy and for Instagram shots, it can be quite handy, actually. But the main camera only really does a decent job. I still like this one. It's one of the best budget camera phones out there actually. So yeah, that's for the first look slash first impressions about the Android N pre-release pre testing upgrade for the Uniphone Gemini. I will now keep testing this um, for a day in real life to send some GPS tests, some camera tests. And then we'll do another video to show you how it performed. So, thanks for watching, bye bye and see you then.